Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and we're back with the winners and losers of 7.37D. I got five heroes for the winners, five heroes for the losers, and maybe even a special honorable mention of an item in the winners category. Yeah, there's an item that got buffed very significantly in this patch that I'd like to talk about. And it's funny, it really shows that this item is much better now because the heroes that would primarily buy it went up in win rate. Like I was looking at the win rates, trying to understand what's going on, what's meta, what's not gonna be meta. And like Brewmaster, just has plus 1.8% win rate. And I'm like, I don't even think he got changed. He didn't get changed. So let's talk about it. Let's break down the patch and let's get into it. On top of that, go sign up to the Gamely website, guys. I'm posting new content over there almost every day and I'll see you there. All right, so starting off with the losers. First of all, we have Win Ranger. This one is no surprise to me when I was reading the patch. If you guys watched the patch video, you probably noticed that I mega, cr I mean, mega cringe when I read the win patch. Everything about this hero got killed. The cooldown on the ult, the duration of the ult. You can't channel Power Shot during the ult. Um, they nerfed the Ags a little bit, which was less relevant, but everything about this hero's ult got destroyed. Now, the one thing I will say is if you want to play Wind Ranger, the hero is still fine, but you have to play Focus Fire Wind Ranger. You cannot play Whirlwind anymore. They nerfed it to the ground. It is completely unplayable and should not be touched. On top of that, they killed Gleipnir. Wind Ranger's main item with this build. So not only did they destroy the hero, they destroyed her major item build. And as a result, people need to adjust if you want to play the hero. Do I recommend playing the hero? Uh, I think it's I think it's fine. I think Focus Fire Wind is fine. I think the build just has to be Maelstrom into BKB and then go from there. Don't upgrade to Gleipnir. It's really not worth it. Something like Maelstrom, BKB, Hurricane Pike, and then honestly going something like Mjolnir so that you have attack speed and attack range after the ulti ends rather than doubling down on one single ulti usage. Next up, we have Ringmaster. I mean, this is fine. I don't really have too much to say here, but he did drop 6.4% win rate since the patch. They just kind of killed everything about the hero. All of its numbers have been nerfed. Not going to spend too much time on it. Do I think the hero is still okay? I actually do. I think it's kind of a matchup dependent hero a bit more now because its W is dispellable. I mentioned in my patch video that Nullifier now completely counters this hero, and that's a bit problematic because in the late game, being able to save with Escape Act was really game breaking. It made the hero really frustrating to play against, but now a single Nullifier, which is already good in the late game, ruins Ringmaster too. So keep that in mind. If you see a Ringmaster, Nullifier in the late game destroys him and will make him even more of a loser than he already is. Next up, we have Lone Druid. They kind of just killed the stat changes of the hero. Similar to Wind Ranger, the hero is actually still playable. However, the hero is only still playable if you take the facet Bear With Me, which is basically just old Lone Druid. You know, it's essentially where you heal the bear, the bear heals you. Um, it, it's actually pretty strong, honestly. The only thing I will say that also killed Lone Druid is that the stat items no longer double at minute 25. And I didn't realize this when I was initially reading the patch, but there are certain heroes that really abuse this, right? There's a lot of heroes that, yeah, you'd buy two bracers, minute 25 comes around, great. I need mana, I'll pick up a Null Talisman at minute 25 and I have no mana problems. But for something like Lone Druid, it was integral to his kit. You would buy multiple, and I'm talking three, four, five Wraith Bands, not only with bare necessities, but actually more so with the bear with me facet, the standard way of playing Lone Druid in the past, really revolved around Wraith Bands. If you don't know why, it's because they share armor. The bear and the hero share armor. So if you got armor on one of them, you would get it on, right? If you got armor on the bear, you would get it on the hero. So what people would do is, at minute 25, you buy four Wraith Bands for the bear. They're all doubled. So it's, it's instead of having 2K worth of Wraith Bands, you have 4K worth of Wraith Bands. And then all of that armor would be shared to the hero. So you, you would be unkillable. Physical damage did literally nothing to Lone Druid, but that's just removed the, from the game. So what do you buy on the bear? The answer is there isn't really anything good. And so yeah, Lone Druid, although I think Bear With Me is fine, it is far worse, and I, maybe there isn't even a great way to play the hero at all. Next up is Sand King. It was just number nerfs. Like, unfortunately, the hero got hit really, really hard. Also, they buffed Vessel a little bit, which is a decent answer to Sand King. He could go Bloodstone and the Yules to kind of deal with this sort of item build, but Spirit Vessel being a better item, right? It reduces healing by 60% instead of 50 now, is a big, big deal against these heal heroes. Talking about heal heroes, we also have Tree and Protector, who got a lot of number nerfs. He dropped by about 3.7% win rate, and this is because they nerfed his shard movement speed by 2%, they nerfed Leech Seed by 5 at all levels, and they made it where Leech Seed heals creeps for 50% of the effectiveness. Now, it's funny, I didn't even, like, really think about this being a big deal, but what was likely happening in Tree and Protector lanes is he would heal his allies, and then it would stack up a double wave, or like a big creep wave, and you'd be able to play very aggressive on that wave. So that's probably actually playing into this win rate change 
quite a bit. Another thing to note is that this is one of those heroes that really needs mana boots. And uh, yeah, I'm sure if you read the patch or watched my video, you know that mana boots is the one of the most nerfed things of the patch. Maybe right behind Wind Ranger. I mean, Wind Ranger got the, the complete axe. Mana boots was a little bit behind it. Um, and so yeah, Treant really relied on that item. All right, now let's talk about the winners, starting with the big item winner. I actually have mentioned it throughout the video already, but it is Spirit Vessel. This item is way better now. And when reading the patch, I actually read over it and read it improperly. You guys fixed what I was saying in the comments. So what I misunderstood is that I thought that the change they made is that Vessel didn't give you a charge if you had no charges when you died. For some reason, I thought that it was only an earned thing. But that made no sense. It made no sense in the moment, and it made no sense in general. It was wrong. What it means is, is that Soul Release, the charges, always give you a charge now when you die. So previously, you would only get that bonus charge if you had zero charges. If you had two charges, you would stay at two. Now, if you have two charges and you die, you go up to three. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but it is. I mean, Spirit Vessel charges are straight up broken. The active on this item is one of the best things in the game. It's literally tied down by the fact that you only have a certain amount of them. So by getting essentially free charges, this item is really broken now. And funny enough, the heroes that literally buy it and then run around and die went up in win rate. I'm not kidding. And some of them are on this list. So I'll cover them now. Starting off, we have Earth Spirit. Funny enough, the hero didn't get changed at all this patch. It didn't get touched. In fact, it was a hero that liked to buy bracers and stack bracers, and that got nerfed. Now, to be fair, something you could argue is good for Earth Spirit is that Pike got nerfed, and that helps him quite a bit. So maybe that increases his win rate a little, but I mean, Pike didn't get killed. It was from 10, a 10 second barrier to an 8 second barrier. Really what made his win rate go up is that now a hero that wants to rush a vessel and run around and die, literally your goal is to create space and make things happen with this hero, just has a much better item. Vessel is just more effective and gives you extra charges. So yeah, I mean, heroes like Earth Spirit are just better now. And on that same note, we have Phoenix. He also went up and won it a lot. He does get hurt by the Bracer nerfs because this is one of those heroes that wanted to buy two, three Bracers as the game progresses. However, now that Bracers are a much worse item, even though you still can buy them, I don't want to confuse you guys, having a Bracer and sometimes even two in the early game is still a good way to be tanky and survive some of the early fights. So if you don't know what to buy, you can still buy bracers, but items like magic wand and raindrops, in my opinion, have moved up in priority because, well, they're just as good, if not better early on, and you don't have to worry about doubling anymore. Also, items like fluffy hat that build into things like vessel are really nice. Building HP is harder now because bracers are worse. Vessel is one of the best items in the game for building HP. The reason why is this item is just strictly 375 HP. It's one of the highest HP items in the game, as well as giving armor for only 2,700 gold. It's quite cheap. All right, but now let's get into some of the top winner heroes. First off, we have a Lich. I was hyping up Lich. I've been hyping up Lich. I've been hyping up Lich way before this patch, and then they buffed him again. I even think this hero in the pro scene is definitely viable. And funny enough, this is a hero that really didn't care much about mana boots. You didn't have to buy mana boots on Lich. The reason for this is because his innate is called Death Charge. When units that are within 1500 range of Lich die, they restore his max mana. Lich cannot gain mana from mana regeneration. Now, to be fair, he actually could gain mana from mana boots, and so mana boots Lich was still fine but he wouldn't really want to buy mana boots because they give mana regen and you just don't get anything from that. And so, yeah, all you really want on Lich is max mana. And so the item I actually recommend you buy is actually a nerfed item, it's Pavise, because that item gives max mana. When you stack max mana, everything that dies around you gives you more mana. So yeah, I think Solar Crest is probably still the way to go on this hero. Also things like Wand, Drums, and even maybe just a Null Talisman to increase your mana pool. Sure, that item's nerfed, but it's still good. And yeah, Lich has been getting buffed like crazy. They've buffed both of his facets, they buffed his innate, and now they buffed his W to go from 30% damage reduction at level 1 to 45%. Now all of a sudden Frost Shield is this incredible value point. And so you can go a skill build of 414 and feel good about it. Previously, you had to max, let's say, Q and then W and leave your E at level 1. And that feels pretty bad because your E is this incredible ability that also got buffed recently. It got buffed because you can cast your abilities during Sinister Gaze. So what people do is they buy the shard, which gives you Ice Spire, puts this thing on the ground, this spire on the ground. 
you can ulti and your ulti bounces between the spire and the hero. So even if two heroes aren't clumped together, you can solo kill someone, you can kill them. And previously, in order to do the combo, you had to buy, I think it was Ags, where you could use your abilities during Sinister Gaze. That's just part of the hero now. And so a build that I'm seeing people do is blink into shard if you want to be a complete troll and solo kill people. I think things like Drum's Solar Crest are probably the way to go, but Lich is just a very good hero right now. Next up, we have Juggernaut. He got a buff to the mana cost on Healing Word, making it much easier to sustain in the early game, your mana pool, which is very notable for Jug. He has heavy mana problems. And they also made it where when you hit people from the front, his innate, you deal 2% more damage, which is a lot, especially considering Omni Slash always hits from the front which is why Omni Slash is this really weird and odd interaction with Bristleback where actually you always hit him from the front, but it's really bad against Mars, for instance, because you always hit Bulwark from the front. So yeah, it's actually a really terrible matchup. Next up is Life Sealer. This hero got one very basic and simple change, and I underestimated how important it is. They increased Feast max HP Life Steal and max HP damage by 0.25, and apparently that's enough to jack the hero up by 3.7% win rate. And all right, that's going to be all for today's video. Those are the big winners and losers of patch 7.37D. If there's anything that you guys are excited to play or you have been playing this patch that you're having success with or all of a sudden feeding your brains out on now, I'd love to hear it in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.